It's the NFL on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Tennessee Titans and the Washington Commanders. And it comes your way next. We are approximately five miles east of Washington, D.C., and that's where you find this place, Commander's Field in Landover, Maryland. Brandon Gaud and Charles Davis on hand. Kickoff just moments away. Charles, quickly, keys to the game. For me, it's coaching. Who prepared his team the best going into this one to give them the confidence to believe that they would win the game? That's who's going to come out of this one on top. Here's Austin Seibert now to get this one started. And off we go from Northwest Stadium at Landover. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. So here are the Titans ready to go on offense for the first time. And it's Will Levis, the 25-year-old at quarterback in his second season out of Kentucky. And last year's rookie year, a bit of a mixed bag for the young signal caller out of Kentucky. Showed off plenty of tools but was hurt in the preseason, and it took a little while to get going. But once he did, he showed exactly why the Titans wanted him. Toughness, leadership, and a big arm. The team rallied around him down the stretch. Levis going to the air right away. That finds the former Jaguar, Calvin Ridley. That's good, the completion there for seven yards, and it'll be second down. And their coach told us the other day that they wanted to get him in a nice groove right out of the gate. And one way to do that, give him quick throws where he get the ball out of his hand in a hurry, as he did there. Here's a second and three now from the 33. Levis now off of play action. Now, quick throw there going to be batted away and incomplete. Receiver coaches preach to their guys all the time. Separation, that's what's going to make the play successful. That time there was very little, and I think they were actually fortunate that it was only knocked away and not intercepted. Third play of this opening drive as they're looking at a third and three. Back to throw, it's Levis. That's dumped off to Power. And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the closed fist of the referee, and that means fourth down. How about that strategy there, Brandon? Third down, they just said, we've got faith in our tackles. We'll give you the short stuff and just decided to protect the sticks. So every time I hear fans telling me tackling's not a part of the game anymore, plays like that, I can clip and save and show them you have to tackle well if you want to be a good defense. Fielded just inside the 20. 44-yard punt, return of nine. And the Commanders will take over with a first and 10. So the Commanders make their way out on offense for the first time here, and it's the rookie Jaden Daniels, the number two overall pick, leading the way. And he was the number two overall pick in the draft because he is special. A dual-threat athlete at the quarterback position, beats you with his arm and his legs, and runs the ball better than any quarterback since maybe Lamar Jackson came out of Louisville. But with that being said, he's got to be smart about how he runs the football. He puts himself in position to take some big shots, He's got to be on the field and available for him and his team to be successful. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Arden Key, the ex-LSU Tiger there on the stop. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. Throwing now is Daniels. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. Have to give some credit to the defender on that when he read all of his keys perfectly and got a great break on the ball and able to force that incompletion. They come up to the line now facing a third and ten after the incompletion. To throw is Daniels. Here's a screen for Robinson. 
And almost, but not quite. Needed 10, he got nine. Fourth down. And that's a play that's not uncommon on third and long because the offense is just hoping that somehow they can get a guy in space and follow some blockers downfield. Does a pretty nice job there getting a few yards, but he ends up getting stopped before he can get the first down. And now the putter, Tress Way, as he sends this one away. It'll be 37 yards there on the punt, and it'll be Titan football. The Titans coming back onto the field for their second drive, and they'll certainly be trying to do better than that first drive where they went three and out. And sometimes the first drive is just simply to settle nerves. You know what it's like at the start of a game with the emotion. Guys a little bit jumpy. Uh, you do. Oh, you, you understand the same way. It's just like <laughs> us calling one, right? Making sure we ease into the game, let it come to us. Well, you went and three and out. And now they have that opportunity. <laughs> uh, no, you didn't go three and out. I went three and out on that first drive. I'll try to do better here. <laughs> Levis back to throw. He'll air this one out for Boyd. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. One thing that offensive guys stress when they throw the deep ball, you're just counting on your receiver to find it, adjust before the defensive back can get his head around. In this case, though, the DB matched it move for move and knocked it away. Now a second and ten. Now Levis. And he will find Ridley. That's complete. Five yards, now it's third and five. Levis to throw it. Drops this underneath for Pollard. And he'll be stopped well short. Only two yards there, fourth and three. Always important as a defender on third down to keep the play in front of you and make sure you don't give up enough space that they can make a move on you in the open field. Try as he might, he wasn't able to get to the first down marker. Excellent defense, good tackling. 46 on his first kick. This one in that neighborhood as well. And looking up into the sun, he's able to make the fair catch inside the 20-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt. And it will be Washington football now with a first and 10. They begin the drive with Robinson. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through. But that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. Now Daniels. That ball nearly intercepted. The rookie had his hands on it, but couldn't pull it in. Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum, big play, right in his hands, unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense that that fell harmlessly to the ground. And to the air goes Daniels. He's going to drop. And he fumbled it. It's on the ground. It's picked up by the Titans. And they'll have great field position here as the ball will be at the 15-yard line. There are two words that we hear coaches say all of the time. One starts with a B. One starts with an S. Ball security. And they preach it. They, they have it up in, in, in meeting rooms, right? You see the signs. They talk about it all the time. But still, when you've got defenders out there who are preaching, hey, we're going to take the ball away from you, no matter what position you play, you've got to take care of the rock. Line of scrimmage, the 15, it's first and 10.
The first carry now for Tony Pollard. And he will score. Touchdown, Titans. Tony Pollard, a 15-yard touchdown run. And the Titans use the early turnover to get on the board first here in this one. Great call to hand that one off, and his running back did the rest. Someone read their keys correctly, and on the defensive side of the ball, they certainly did not because they really essentially were just going to swarm the quarterback. They kind of guessed themselves out of the play, and guess who benefited? The guy with the football. Full connects on the extra point, and that makes the score 7-0. Well, they got the ball in great field position. One play later, boom, end zone. Seven nothing is our score. Ready for the dynamic kickoff as this one's away. Oh, a good looking return set up here. And a pretty slick return there. Almost got it to the 45. Officially, they'll call him down at the 44. The Washington offense set to take over. Not only are they in search of their first score, they're in search of their first first down in this ball game as they come up first and ten. And the slot man goes in motion left. Oh, here's a fake on the jet sweep and a give to Robinson. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Plays like we just saw there. That's why they're up right now. And the defense, they're doing their job. Yeah, it starts with the guys up front. So when you talk with GMs who are putting together a team, a lot of them say, we're going to build from the inside out because if you control the line of scrimmage, you control the rest of the ball game. And that's what we're seeing here. They're actually playing in the offense's backfield, not necessarily just playing at the line of scrimmage. And he gets them a little over half of what they needed. Now they're looking at a third and five. And this is where coaches sometimes fall into different camps. Your guy just fumbled. It led to a touchdown. Do you stay with him or do you put him in the doghouse? This is definitely a show of confidence here as he's right back out there and carrying the ball again. Here's Daniels. Pass to the sideline and pulled in. Yeah, he'll be out just a yard or two shy of the 30. The rookie from LSU leading this offense well. A good throw there leads to a first down. I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. Now that's going to go as a loss of six, and it'll set him back for second down. Pretty straightforward play there by the linebacker. He saw the run, went with straight-ahead pursuit, and dumped him behind the line of scrimmage. Daniels looking to throw. That's to McCaffrey complete. Coming up here, looking for three yards to pick up the first. From the shotgun, it's Daniels. And this is going to be incomplete. That was well played, but that was also an example of a corner who understands his coverage, realized he had support behind him, and could be a little more aggressive in the shorter zone, and did exactly that, knocking that pass away. Seibert's kick is good, and they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. So that kick gives them their first points of the game, CD, and it comes on the third drive, but hopefully for them that's a spark that gets that offense going. 
Yeah, and I would say if you're the offensive play caller, as you look at your sheet, you're trying to find that part on there that unlocks bigger points. They struggled with a few drives so far, finally got three out of it. How do you find the end zone? That's what he's searching for now. After the made field goal, Seibert back out there to kick it away. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. A minimal gain as we tick down inside of a minute remaining in the opening quarter. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. After one, seven, three, the score on EA Sports. Second quarter now, Titans in possession of the football. So seven yards from the first down here as they come up to the line of scrimmage. Levis looking to throw. Going quickly there, but it's incomplete. Problems on third down so far in this first half. Relatively small sample size, but they're now 0 for 3. And the average in the league, somewhere around 40% on third down for offenses. So what's the answer to this? Either convert them or don't get the third down in the first place. Get your big chunks of yards on first and second down. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. It's a 47-yard punt, return of six. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. Here comes the commander's offense back onto the field. It's been very much a slow start for them. Three drives and just the three points, CD. Yeah, if you're into the points per drive ratio, that answer is one. And that's not going to get it done in a ball game. They've got to find a way to finish these drives in end zones, not having balls go through goalposts. Off the play fake, Daniels. They'll roll him out right. The improv on the scramble there gets him six, and it'll be second down. You know what I like about that play? He didn't try to do too much on first down. He took what the defense gave him, put together a solid gain to bring up second and manageable. Now they have a couple of plays to pick up just a few yards and a new set of downs. From the 33, here's a second down and four. Straight ahead, it's Robinson. Found a little room there as he's up to about the 37. They give him about four on the play, but he's marked short, so it'll be third and about the length of the football. Pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was, and they stopped him just short of it. What it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side, is it? Defense understanding, as you noted, where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there. Robinson will try to pick it up. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. I don't know about you, but that almost felt like old-time football there. Third and two is not necessarily just a running down anymore. A lot of times they want to throw the ball. But they went back to the roots and powered forward and got the first down. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Well, they go play action. Daniels. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. Sebastian Joseph Day breaking through for the sack. 
Well, on that one, they, they go with the play fake CD, but I don't think anybody really was fooled. All eyes were fixated on the quarterback, and they got him to the ground. And to run this play successfully, you've got to make sure that everyone is doing their part. You actually have to sell this play. You've got to sell the run action. Otherwise, why do you stop at the running back? You just run straight for the quarterback and put him on the ground. This is Ertz on the pitch and catch. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. First catch for him on the afternoon, and it results in a first down. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. And that's complete to McCaffrey. It'll go as a gain of four, and that will bring up second down. Off the option, here's Robinson. Oh, a heck of a move. Man. What a nice burst there as he'll take this inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. They give him 16 yards there, and it's a Washington first down. We often give credit to the O-line there. Two tight end formation. Those tight ends block pretty well also. Yeah, and that's one of the most dynamic positions in football now. The tight ends who can block at the line of scrimmage at the point of attack, and they can also get downfield and catch the football. And they will eventually get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. Good yardage as he rumbles for 24 and a first. Not too shabby for his first carry of the game. That's exactly what most teams are looking for, a really good change of pace back. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Robinson will struggle to get to the line of scrimmage as he'll be tackled back at the four-yard line. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. I have a feeling they'll stay committed to running the football, especially on the early downs. They just haven't had a whole lot of success just yet. From back at the four, here's second and goal. Looking for McLaurin, and he's got him. Touchdown, Washington. Four yards on the touchdown grab. And Washington has taken the lead. Well, with this rookie QB, we talk a lot about his ball placement and how good he can be at laying it right in there. I think we just saw, Charles, though, the strength of that arm. That was an absolute rifle for the completed touchdown. It absolutely was, and let's face it, you think he was really ready to get that first touchdown? Absolutely. He threw that pass with authority, just as you described. Big-time arm right there, and let's face it, a lot of quarterbacks used to be pitchers in baseball. The fastball was usually their best pitch, and we saw it there. Extra point by Seibert, up and good. And the lead is now 10-7. to seven. Following the touchdown, here's Seibert now to kick it off. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Tennessee offense set to go again. As we eat closer and closer to intermission, Charles, remember last time out they punted. They would love to get points here, especially if this is going to be their final possession of the first half. Yeah, and this is what close games feel like because the pressure is on both sides, but sometimes the pressure is a little bit higher 
on the team with the slight edge because they're trying to hold on to that, trying to increase it. Let's see how this one continues. Off the play fake, Levis. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. Chalk that one up to bad acting, I guess, because they certainly failed to sell the handoff, and the pressure stayed keyed in on the quarterback. No Oscar awards for this offense, just a loss of yardage. Coming up to the line, and they will need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Levis sets up to throw here. A short throw taken in by Conquo. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch. And third and eight now. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. And Washington now going to use the first of their three timeouts. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this second quarter. Washington on third down. 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This is third and eight. Levis from the gun. This one caught by Ridley. And he will have a Titans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Here's Levis. And it's complete right back to Ridley. And they'll get to him after a gain of seven to the 47. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Levis. And the catch made, it's Tyler Boyd. And they're going to have another first down here as the tackle's made at Washington's 23. The catch and run pays off for 29 yards. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage, so timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. They'll look to throw again. This is caught. It's Boyd. And out of bounds all the way down at the three. They go right back to him for 20 and a first. Just picking up yardage in bunches here. These last few plays, they have moved right down the field. And just like that, they... And I believe they buzz down. They're going to take another look at this play with all reviews coming from the replay official here in the final two minutes of the half. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I, I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. So it's first and goal and a great opportunity to get that lead back before the break. Back to throw, it's Levis. That's complete, right around the eight. It'll go as a loss on the play. Not what you need down here. It's going to be second and goal. Again, he'll drop to throw. And it's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Tennessee. Nick Westbrook-Akine. 
a five-yard touchdown. And the Titans will take the lead here in the final minute of the first half. That could be an important swing right there, a touchdown in the final minute of the half to take the lead. And I like the point you just made there. Could be an important swing because now that they have the lead, if they can carry that into the locker room at the half, they'll feel really good about what they accomplished in the first two quarters. Extra point up and good by Folk. And the lead is now 14 to 10. So that drive in total eight plays. And the result in the end, a Titans touchdown. is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. Oh, a dangerous return man showing it here. And he nearly broke that for more, but as it is, still a good return. They'll start the drive right around the 37. The commanders back out late in this first half. And with great starting field position and a couple of timeouts at their disposal, they'll certainly have the green light here. They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and 10 at their own 37. To throw is Daniels. And he's got McCaffrey open, complete. The commander's going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 40 seconds remaining in this first half. Second down and six now. Throwing now is Daniels. Zacchaeus here hauling it in. Now Washington going to go ahead and use their final timeout. And with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. Working out of the gun, Daniels. And that one to the right side and incomplete. So many times we've seen him try to escape the pocket and do something with his legs, but in this case, the pressure was too intense and he made the wise choice to just get rid of the football and make sure no one was going to get it. Second and 10. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. This pass finds McCaffrey going across the middle. Ten yards there, good for a Washington first down. And maybe that touchdown on the previous drive has re-energized this offense a little bit. They've been kind of sluggish until then, but they're showing signs of life here, and they get good yardage that time and a first down. Now Daniels. A throw left sideline falls incomplete. Offense was moving it a little bit, had them back on their heels, but they earned a brief pause by forcing the incompletion. That gives them a quick chance to regroup and try and mount a stand before they're backed up even further. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. This will be from 56 yards out. And his kick is good. He got every bit of that one as it's good from 56 yards out. So we reach halftime here with the visiting Titans taking the lead into intermission. As we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. Coach! It was a strong first half for running back Tony Pollard. He wound up finding the end zone on a touchdown run to help give his guys the advantage here at the break. Okay, Coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far.
Washington down on the scoreboard, but they are getting the football first here, and we are back underway on EA Sports. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. The Washington offense ready to go to begin the third quarter. And they're still very much in this game, although they do trail. What's the game plan, Charles, for the second half? It might be a little counterintuitive because most people will think losing equals passing the ball more, but I'd establish the running game. They kind of went away from it in the first half. I think if they get back in balance, it'll help them when they put the ball back in the air. You can just kind of sense the momentum turning here. It's first and ten. To the air goes Daniels. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. Here's second and ten. Play action, now it's Daniels. This is caught, it's Brown. And he takes it all the way down to the three. A big play there on the catch and run. 72 yards. Oh, big time credit, what a play design there. They wanted to get him loose in the open field, and they succeeded. He had all sorts of room to operate in, and they finally track him down inside the five-yard line. After the big play, a chance to finish now on first and goal. Now Daniel's going to give it up on the touch pass. Well, had a great read by the secondary. They come up to stop that touch pass before it can even get back to the line. It'll go as a loss on the play. Not what you need down here. It's going to be second and goal. The defensive coordinators love that. You got a cornerback willing to stick his nose in there, come up on run support, and stop that pop pass dead in its tracks. And part of one good thing about trying to defend. And he takes it in. Touchdown, Commanders. Brian Robinson, Jr. A six-yard touchdown run. And the Commanders have taken the lead as they go right down the field and score on the opening drive of the second half. Well, they move the ball down the field through the air, Charles, and then finally they get the running game involved, and it works to perfection. Touchdown. And, partner, I kept waiting for that running game to come into play, and they actually saved it until the very end. Touchdown goes on his stat sheet, but you and I both know, and he knows as well, his teammates airing it out made this a successful drive. Daniel's going to try and throw for it, and that is caught for the two points. And the formula there on the two-point try, they go five wide, not even the option to hand the ball off. They got it. They tried to create space, and there isn't a whole lot of it there. For the defense, what you're trying to do is make sure that if someone, if they're going to catch the ball, make them catch it behind you because they run out of space with the back line. But in this case, the offense figured it out. Following the touchdown, here's Seibert now to kick it off. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. The Titans offense gears up for their first possession of the second half. The center receiver in motion to the right. Levis to throw it. Throw left side complete. That's Boyd. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. 
That play going for 16 yards to start the drive. First down. We can talk all we want about football being a game of strength and brawn. It's also a game of mismatches, and they're trying to create one there, getting it to their back out of the backfield to make a bigger play. As we often say, get it to him in space, let him use his leg. Yeah, if he can get a matchup against a linebacker or maybe a defensive end dropping out in a zone blitz, he's going to win that battle just about every time. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. Boy, 30 more yards and another first down. Oftentimes now, offenses aren't nearly as precise as days gone by. They just tell receivers, find an open patch of grass and let the quarterback find you. And that's exactly what they did on that play. First with the pass through the air, nice chunk of yardage there, and then additional pickup with his legs after the catch. In Washington territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 27. Pollard going to try the right side. And they've got it in the red zone now, down at about the 19. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still. Got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? Levis back to throw. On the throw, led him too much that time. It's incomplete. Just a little beyond the reach there of his receiver. That's probably one he wishes he had back. He wishes it had been seven on seven in practice, or maybe even routes versus air, because that's a completion he makes, what, 9.9 .9 times out of 10? Just missed that one. Trying to run for it with Pollard. And into the end zone for a Tennessee touchdown. Tony Pollard with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Titans are an extra point away from evening this one up. Well, they were looking to pick up the first down on third and short. They got a little more than they bargained for, finding the end zone as well. And oftentimes in short yardage situations, you get a lot of defenders stacked near the line of scrimmage, partner. So if you can get past that first wave, there's usually room to roam, and he found it. Full connects on the extra point, and we are tied at 21. So that drive spanned five plays. And the capper, a 19-yard touchdown run. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. And a Washington offense heading out. We got a brand new ball game all even after that last touchdown. So every drive now becoming a little more critical here in the second half. They start on the ground with Robinson here. And he'll take this up near the 35, maybe the 34. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. He had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one? Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. Now second and three. Again, it's Robinson. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 46 yards rushing on 12 carries for him now. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice, because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there. I'm just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. A big Sebastian Joseph Day there on the stop. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. 
Here's Daniels. Pressure comes, and the Titans able to bring him down. Credit the sack there to Harold Landry. But you could almost see his eyes light up defensively. I mean, as a linebacker, that's about as quick as you can get to a quarterback. So what did your third grade teacher teach you about straight lines, right? As soon as you have those, you take full advantage of them. He found a gap in the offensive line, got to the quarterback, and put him on the deck. So here's a third and 14. From the shotgun, it's Daniels. He'll get this out wide to Eckler. And they'll get him down about three yards short of the first. They'll get 11, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. And I believe that that gain on third and long changes things quite a bit because this would be a very long field goal. I wouldn't be surprised to see him go for it here. Here's Tressway now as he'll punt it away for the second time. And that one hits at the seven, but bounds into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. Here's Tennessee ready to begin this drive offensively. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you've scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go around. Levis looking to throw. Over the middle, that's caught by Ridley. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. And his play caller does a nice job of giving him an easy throw to start this drive, and he takes advantage of it. The completion sets up a manageable second down. Up at the 29 now, they'll head to the line, second and a yard. Now Levis. Over the middle, he has a Conquo. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. An 11-yard pickup for the Titans and a first down. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches, as we just saw him do there, because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that in-line. Levis in trouble, down he goes. The defense rising to the challenge and setting him back on the sack. And on that one, the protection just broke down. You've got to have that leverage, don't you? We always talk about low man wins in the running game for an offensive lineman versus a defensive lineman. It's essentially the same thing in pass protection. Get lower than that defensive lineman so that you can keep your balance and keep him away from your guy trying to throw the football. So after the sack, a scenario you certainly don't work on too often. Second and 24. On the draw, it's Pollard. Yeah, nothing doing here is this time the run maybe gets him back to the line of scrimmage, but that's it. No gain on the play this time, and it'll be a third and long situation coming up. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. To the sideline and incomplete. One first down here, and that's all, folks. Good work by this defense to hold things in check and force a punting situation. Here's Ryan Stonehouse now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. It's a four-yard return following a punt of 49. And they will take over first and 10. Now this will probably be the last play of the quarter. Off the play fake, Daniels. And he's going to lose yardage here. As they will switch ends as time has run out on this third quarter of play. We have played three quarters. 
We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now at Commander's Field. All even as we get ready to start the fourth. Protection certainly going to need to be a bit better here on second and 16. Daniels looking to throw. That's to McCaffrey complete. He'll be dropped at the 25 after a gain of six. But right there, he rose to the occasion late in a close game. It's something he thought about, dreamed about, and worked on throughout his career. Because in these types of situations, he wasn't going to allow extra coverage to keep him from getting the football. Daniels from the gun on third down. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. Give him 30 yards there. Talk about a momentum shifter right there. Tie game, fourth quarter. These are the plays that win you games. And now defensively, the question becomes, how do you respond? So operating from Tennessee territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 44-yard line. Back to throw. Daniels. Over the middle here to Brown. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And it'll be second down. They'll look to throw again. Throw out wide is incomplete. That pass just a little bit off. It looked like maybe he tried to force it in there. Game speed, always different, no matter what you do in practice. You can't simulate it, right? So your decision-making, everything has to be a little bit quicker. Sometimes it can throw you off until you adjust. And everybody thinking about the possible field goal on fourth. It would be 58 yards from here. And that is incomplete. Has to be a little bit of frustration there. Back-to-back -back incompletions. Receivers blanketed on both attempts, this time on third down. Here's Tressway now as he's on to punt for Washington. And here's a very low line drive, almost whiffed on it. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. Excellent job by their defense to force the punt and provide them with this opportunity all tied in the fourth quarter. Little bootleg here, Levis. That's complete to Westbrook Akine. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Two yards to go, second down. Now Levis keeps it option left. That will go for nine yards and a first down on the keeper. Well, he is certainly dangerous when he spots a lane and he keeps it himself there and worked out well. And how about the moving parts on a play like this? You know you have to practice it over and over because it's almost like a ballet that has to be choreographed. But how about once he made the decision to go, he committed to it and went. Let's face it, most teams are going to defend the running back much more than the quarterback on that type of a play. And that play is blown up, losing yardage back at the 35. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Part of the thinking when you bring in extra tight ends, you're hoping that each of your guys gets those one-on-one -on -one blocks and creates a crease for your runner. But the converse is, though, you've got to win those one-on-one -on -one blocks. And when you don't, that's the result you end up with. Levis out of the shotgun now. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. 
Couldn't hang on third down. As his old brain remembers, when I see five wide receivers on the field as a defender, I know the ball's coming out hot. They expected it and got there and popped it free. This offense so far on third down, they've converted just two for six thus far. This is going to be third and 13. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. Five yards that time out of the scramble. But now they're looking at a fourth down situation. Nice call on defense, rolling out the nickel package for that big third down play. And he did an excellent job locking down coverage and forcing him to try and run for it. And he doesn't get there, which brings up a big fourth down call. Here's Ryan Stonehouse now as he's on for the fifth time here today. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. And the fair catch is taken at about the 13-yard line here. The commander's offense and Jaden Daniels getting set for this next possession. And this defense might be about ready to wave the white flag. Nothing they have tried to throw at him has been that successful. He just processes things so quickly and makes a right read seemingly every time. The Washington offense at the line and ready to roll. Over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions. Last time out, they had to punt it away. This time, hoping to finish this thing off of the end zone. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. Well, the end of all that hitting and hollering, it was a four-yard run, so the offense is going to go back to Huddle and feel pretty good about themselves. Defensively, you have to feel okay because you didn't let it turn into a bigger run, but the goal shut it down for two yards or less that's when you start to feel good about yourselves it's complete to brown right side well, that'll get them to first down as they get nine yards out of that quick slant and the throw and the catch were just fine but again zone coverage when you run a drag route what you're hoping for is he makes the catch and makes someone miss and they don't there very difficult route to run when everyone has their eyes back towards the quarterback and they're able to see the route develop on first and ten it's robinson and able to stay on his feet past the 30 to about the 33-yard line. 57 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. Well, I think after that run, the defense is getting back in the huddle and looking at each other and maybe starting to question their confidence a bit. They gave up a significant run, six yards, and now you're saying to yourself, how do we stop them, and do I have enough confidence to make a play? Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. A very solid gain of 27. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. So operating from Tennessee territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 41. To throw is Daniels. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there. And it's second down. It's another zone defense. It looks like it's open for possibilities, but they did a nice job patrolling the middle of the field and forcing an incompletion. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Back to the ground with Robinson. And here's another tackle made at the line. So they're converging well on the football now. No gain on that one as it brings up a third and ten. They've called his number a lot this afternoon. You wonder how much tread is left on those tires. We certainly do, but I always think back to one of my favorite coaches in the NFL. And he used to have a meeting with his running backs every year in the offseason and say, look, as many times as you're going to carry the ball, you should be able to carry it one more. And the Titan defense steps up here, and down he goes. Give the sack to Jerome Baker. Getting down to the good stuff. All tied with two minutes remaining on EA Sports. So it's Washington with the football here as we welcome you back. 
And they're looking at fourth down now in this tie ball game. Here's Tressway now as he's on to punt for Washington. And this will be up to the ruling of the side judge here. He says it crossed out of bounds at the 16-yard line. The Titans offense now, they work their way back onto the field. The defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive. First and ten. They'll come up first and ten here. Levis to throw. Complete. Pollard. They'll get him to the ground at the 20 following a pickup of four. What do you think? Play this safe? Just worry about getting to OT? Yeah, don't make any risky throws. It's going to change the outcome. But if anyone slips, take the big shot. Here comes second down. Levis, he'll look to throw it. Open man, Westbrook Akine. And he stopped right at the 25 after a gain of five. Well, that sets up a big third down. Now the decision has to be, do you run it here and play for OT? Or do you go ahead and press it downfield? A big play here as the crowd noise rises. Third and one. Here's Levis. He's got his running back out of the backfield. And he will have a Titans first down as they're able to convert on third and short yardage with a gain of four. Clock's under a minute. Still plenty of time, partner. They have all three timeouts. That means they have plenty of options in their play calling and where they target on the field. They can throw it downfield, maybe even in the middle, and use their timeouts. Levis. The throw here right sideline falls incomplete. A little less than 40 seconds remaining. Here comes second and 10. Levis. And incomplete on the deep ball. Third and long coming up defensively. You pressure the quarterback or drape all over the passing lane? Yes. That's exactly so what you do. It's both because <laughs> they're not mutually exclusive. They may have been at one time in football, but not anymore. You want to have that pressure. And if you have a big-time pass rusher, send him after the quarterback and then make sure you blanket the field. On third down, it's Pollard. And he is going to be brought down. And now making matters more dire, this is going to be fourth down. Here's Ryan Stonehouse now as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. And he fields it cleanly. It's a 45-yard punt, six yards on the return. And control of the football, switching hands here with very little time remaining in this contest. Here's first and ten. Now a handoff to start it out. Robinson. And he'll be taken down as that'll net him only about a gain of nine. Now Washington going to use the second of their three timeouts as they get it with 16 seconds remaining on the clock. They'll come up now on second down. Now Daniels. And that's complete to Brown. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. And a timeout coming in. This will be their final one with 10 seconds remaining.
This is first and ten. Throwing now is Daniels. Pressure comes, and the Titans able to bring him down. Sebastian Joseph Day able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. So it's the Titans who will control the football first here in overtime as we're back underway. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. Here's Tennessee ready to begin this drive offensively. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting because three straight drives have ended with him putting the football away. Yes, yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. They'll run with Pollard to begin the drive. A solid stiff arm. And he'll be taken down, but not before they reach the 50. 63 yards rushing for him now with a couple of touchdown runs to boot. They had a chance to limit his yardage, but he was able to fight off that tackle. So it's not just the responsibility of the guys who missed the tackles along the way. It's all 11 on defense, able to stop this guy, unable to do it on that play. They've got to find a way. How about his ability to break through and gain that yardage? First throw of overtime for Will Levis. And that one too wide and incomplete. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. From the midfield strike, they'll look to throw. A short throw taken in by a Conquo. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. And there wasn't much room for the big tight end to do much after the catch. But at least he was able to pick up a solid gain to help his offense continue to move in the right direction. So a big play in this opening drive of overtime. Now looking at a third and three. Levis sets up to throw here. And that's going to be incomplete. The contact there enough to jar that ball free. And it brings up fourth down. As defensive coordinators around the league tell me all the time, that throw is not for every quarterback because you've really got to drive the ball downfield. It's going to be a tight window for him to fit that one into. In this case, unsuccessfully. Now on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. And that is much too long. That's into the end zone for a touchback. A look at Washington as they come onto the field. Well, their defense did the job, got off the field without giving up any points. And now, Charles, all they need here is a field goal, and they get the victory. Yeah, and this is the way I love overtime. I'm one of those really, really old school guys that like sudden death right from the beginning. Well, we've got it now because any points wins the game. On defense, get a safety, a pick six, fumble return. You can win it as well. So I'm really looking forward to this series and see how both sides play it. And he's going to be unable to get upfield as they take him down at the 21-yard line. Only a yard on the keeper, and it'll be second down. This being their second opportunity in overtime, third overall drive, see if they can settle into a rhythm. And that's what you're looking for. Get a few first downs, move the ball downfield, have some confidence, get yourself in a spot where you can at least kick a field goal to win it. But I tell you this, 
If I'm the play caller, I'm looking at that part of my sheet that says playmakers. Get the ball in their hands, critical situation, now's their time. So they'll get eight out of that completion, and it'll leave them with third and a full yard to go. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. Well, they go play action. Daniels. And that is incomplete. Once that ball was popped in the air, you could almost hear the silence, the collective breath being held here in the stadium. Let's be honest about it. We both came out of our chairs, didn't we? All right, anytime you see the ball in the air like that, there is that collective rise, the crowd holding its breath, and boy, oh boy, the moment of truth as it comes down. Man, that was something. Everything magnified here in overtime. 36 yards on the punt with no return, and it'll be Titan football. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. Well, this is a pretty rare situation here, Charles. You get in overtime, neither team coming through with even a field goal on their first drive. So now, sudden death with the time remaining. Next score wins. And now I would say that going at it might be a little bit easier for both teams now because they've eased into overtime. That first series, boy, everything on the line then. Now you've seen what a defense is thrown at you. You can make some adjustments, and all you need is three points to win it. Throwing the out route, finding Boyd for the completion. But that's what you're looking for when you want to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. Each team's had it in overtime, so next score wins. Here's second down. Pollard will take it up the gun. And he's dropped right at the 40. Gain of three. Now they need two. Here's third down. Here's Pollard again. And he brings this up to the 46. Good enough for the first. 72 yards rushing for him now as he was just trying to will his guys to an overtime victory. And yeah, they really needed to get something going, didn't they? They had punted on the last two possessions. The running game starting to come to the front for them, providing a nice pickup there to keep this drive going. And they run the option here on first and ten. Well, the ball's loose. Levis has it knocked free. And it's Washington that scoops it up. And they take over. They'll set up shop at the 46-yard line. And a costly, costly mistake. Coaches talk so much about ball security in an overtime so paramount. Partner, do you ever wonder if maybe they talk about it too much? Too much, yeah. doesn't seem like you can, but maybe by discussing it time and time again, and you know they overemphasized it here, it almost became self-fulfilling. And any points beat them here, field goal or a touchdown now. Following the fumble recovery, Daniels. This a quick slant, and he's got Terry McLaurin. So the completion good for six yards, and that'll bring up second down. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed because you hit a guy on the run like that, he often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. Throwing it Terry McLaurin's way again, and he's got it. And all the way inside the 15 before they drop it. The extra effort after the catch makes it good for a gain of 26 and also a first down. Another nice play there. They've gotten down into the red zone in no time at all. That's what this offense can do when they get on a roll. And now they're set up with a first and 10. And now another timeout here called by the Titans. They'll be left with just one remaining here at OT. So everything rests now on the right foot of Austin Seibert. This to win it in overtime. And he got it. The kick is good in overtime. He's able to split the uprights. 
And the Commanders are going to win this football game. But Charles, a very simple mission anytime that you play on your home turf, and that is to defend your home turf. And today, that mission was accomplished. Look, every offseason, every preseason, the head coach goes in front of the team and says, the mission for the season, defend our home field every time, split on the road, and we'll be in the playoffs. That's why defending the home field is vital. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gaughton. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. The Commanders pick up the victory as we say so long from our nation's capital.